Hey everyone, it's David Draftbit, and I'm going to show you one way that you can set up infinite scrolling in your Draftbit apps. Um, so in case you don't know what infinite scrolling is, that's when you've got a list of data that as your user scrolls down the list, um, data continues to be populated into the list the further they scroll. Um, you might have seen stuff like this in social media apps, you know, where you just keep scrolling and scrolling and it never ends. So um, obviously, if you loaded every single record uh, for your list that exists and you have, you know, millions or even thousands of records, like that's not very good for your app. You don't want to load all those at the same time. So typically what you would do is you would uh, paginate your results. So at the bottom of you know you would like pull in maybe 10 20 30 50 records and then at the bottom you would have links to additional pages like next page or you've seen at the bottom where it's like page one page two page three um, so in that way you're only pulling a, a subset of all your data at one time that way you know your requests are not um, taking a long time so um, this is basically a variation on that where um, instead of clicking a button to go to the next page you basically trigger that request for the uh, the next set of data in your list um, as the user gets to the end of the existing data in the list so you can see here i'm scrolling down and it continues to go to the next page you can see i've got a total of 10 pages worth of data and as i scroll down here my current page updates as I get to the end of the list with the data of the previous page. So basically what I've got here is, I'm gonna switch this back to draft view. Um, what I've got is a few variables here, screen variables. So I've got a data variable and this stores the data for the list. And you can see I have a default value that I've put in here. And by doing this, this lets DraftBit know the keys for your the objects in your array. Um, if you don't put an initial value in there, then DraftBit can't recognize um, which fields of your data you know that you want to use. So when you're trying to assign things in your list, um, like to the text field uh, on your list or any kind of interaction or whatever, and you need data from your uh, list, DraftBit in this case, because we're using a variable, won't know unless you give it a, a default value. If you're pulling in data um, from a fetch and passing that data directly into a list, then you don't have to worry about this. But since we're using a variable and passing the variable into our list, um, we want to give it a default value. So I just have a an array with a single uh, test object in there. And then I've got one variable, a number type variable um, for the last page so that I can keep track of the last page, mostly for demonstration purposes here, but also um, I'm using it so that as I continue to scroll or as the user continues to scroll, if they hit the end of the list, and we're already on the last page, then it doesn't continue to make requests over and over and just get the same results back. So um, it kind of just depends on how you're doing yours. You might want to use that, you might not. And then the page number is how I'm, what I'm using to track which page of the data I'm on. Um, so I basically set this to one as the default because when the screen loads, I want to fetch the first page of the data and uh, increment from there. Okay, so let me show you what I've got for my data. There's, uh, we have some example data, but it's not helpful in this situation because um, we need to have paginated data, right? Which returns um, a response that has things like the last page and the page that you're on and stuff like that. So um, I'm using interim, this is free and I've already got an account and so I'm just going to come here to the tasks and I can show you here um, under query and paginate you can see that 
it's telling me if I add this query string here to my my endpoint, it's going to return my data in this format. So it's going to give me all this information like the total records, which uh, how many per page, the current page, the last page. Um, these are like uh, web links that you would use or if you wanted to use these um, to pass into a fetch or something like that. And then I've got all the actual records under a data key here. So you can see uh, I can pass paginate and then this tells me how many items I want to receive each for each page. And then I've got a page parameter here and I'm you can pass in a number there. So basically you can say, give me the first page and I want 20 records on each page or I want 50 records on each page. So the first, if in this case, we were, uh, it's paginating 20 and we're on two. So the page one would be one through 20 and page two would be uh, 21 through 40 or whatever. Um, okay, so I've got an endpoint set up. Let me show you that, which is page and eight tasks. And again here, this is exactly the same format that we saw over here, right? I'm using the exact same thing. And I've just basically, I've made these variables, right? So that we can pass in whichever number or whichever uh, page that we want. So uh, for this test um, data, I've got 20 as the number and one for the page. And then I can show you what that looks like when we return it. So here is our data current page one. It shows our data here, which is going to be 20 records. And then you can see here from one last page 10. So these are uh, last page right there and data right here. And then current page are the things that we're going to be working with. And that's the variables that you saw a minute ago. So we're basically going to grab that data from each of these. Okay. So um, I'll resave that and done. Okay. So what's happening here? I'm using, in this case, I'm using a screen level data request. You don't have to use this. You could put a, all this into a fetch if you wanted to. But um, for this situation, I'm using the screen level fetch. So on the screen, I'm coming to the data tab and I've selected my source and our interim and the paginate tasks. I'm passing in 20 and uh, I'm passing in one. These are just the default values, right? Um, I want to get the first page and I want to get 20 results. And you can see here, here's my response. And then uh, on data, which means when, once that uh, screen loads and it gets that data that we've requested here, after that happens on this on data trigger, I'm just setting the variable, uh, our data variable to the data from uh, the response, that's that's all that's going on there. And then um, I'm also setting our last page variable to the last page uh, field from our response. Okay, so that gives us our data and then we can go down to the list and we can see for the list, the data that I'm giving it is the data from our screen variable and then Inside here, I've just got a text and I'm passing in the text from the list item, right? So each of our list items and tasks in this case has a name is complete and ID. And so I'm just grabbing the name and uh, passing it in here as a dynamic variable. Okay, so how do we make it get this data and update it? right once we get to the bottom well we've got a trigger on the list component for on end reached okay so first let me show you we've got another setting here which is end reach threshold it's it defaults to 0.5 so 0.5 would be halfway down the screen or uh, down the list i guess um, so once the user has scrolled to the halfway point of the list that's going to trigger the on end reached trigger. So in my case, I've got to set to point two because I, I want to get further down the list. So that's, you know, point two um, is not quite to the end, but almost to the end 
usually you don't want to wait till the very end because there might be like a little stutter so if you've got it like set to two it's basically a continuous scroll you know like um, because it's fetching a little bit before the user actually gets to the new data uh, anyway okay so on end reached i've got a couple things going on so first thing i'm doing is and this might be different for your situation but here for this situation and the data that i'm getting back this is what makes sense okay um so i'm first of all i'm checking to see are we already on the last page do we even need to get more data so if we don't need to get more data i'm not going to get more data i'm just going to stop right there so that's what i'm checking here i'm saying is the page that we're on equal to the last page and if it is we're just going to stop um, if it isn't then we're going to continue down the stack and so i am setting the variable to page and what i'm doing is i'm incrementing so i'm just uh, we've got these built-in transform functions and i'm using one of them for this uh, where it just takes the number that you give it and it adds one and it gives that number back to you so i'm saying taking the page variable and then I'm taking what that value is, right, page, and then I'm incrementing that value, and it's going to return the incremented value and assign it to page. Okay, and so once I've got that page updated, then I make a new request. And you can see here I'm still passing 20 as the number of records, but I've got our page variable passed into the page um, uh, query parameter here so that every time that that page variable updates it re-triggers this api request and the api request gets that updated page number so that it sends it to the back end and the back end knows okay i need uh, page two or page three okay so then once that data is re uh, we uh, we get that data all I'm doing is uh, taking that response. I'm getting the uh, I'm extracting the data from that response. Remember here, all our records are actually under the uh, data key. So I'm um, extracting the data key. I'm assigning it to a new temporary variable, new data, and then. Uh, same thing here with the last page. I'm extracting the last page because um, in, in, a, in a situation where you've got multiple people updating records at the same time, as you scroll, there's new records being added in, in a lot of cases. So um, that last page might actually update from one request to the other. So I'm also updating our last page. That way I can always know um, has the user scrolled to the end of the data that's available? And then um, I'm setting the last page that we got back from this request and updating it, uh, updating this, the uh, last variable with that new value. And uh, same thing here with the data. I'm setting our, uh, basically, so I'm not replacing, in this case, I'm not, um, so back here we were just replacing these the last page and uh the page variables we're, we're just replacing those values right um because it's a single value but in this case with our data um, we don't want to replace it because we want the user to be able to scroll back up through all the stuff all the other uh, pages of the list so instead of replacing it i'm uh, concatenating the array with the new data so this is another transform function that we've got and I'm taking the data that came from the new response with the new page data, and I'm saying, give me the old data, the ex what, what is set to as existing data, the variable, and then we want to concatenate the new data from this request to the end of that. Okay, does, uh, um, basically it's just, concat means we're merging these two things together. So we've got one array of our data already that we're displaying, and then we, we've made a new request to our backend to get a new set of data, right? So now we've got two arrays of data and we want to, uh, we want to send, we want to attach or merge the uh, new data to the end of the first array of data. So that's what this does. Okay. And that's it. I mean, that's all that's going on here. So um, when the page loads, we're fetching data and we're assigning it to a variable. We're sending that variable to our list 
And then on our list, we have a trigger that for on and reached. And so every time that we reach the end of the list, in this case, it's going to be um, 20% down the page or from the bottom of the, of the list. Um, we're going to refetch data. First, we're going to check, do we need data? If we don't, we're going to um, just leave it alone. And if we do, we're going to increment our page number, get the next page of data. We're going to extract the data from that request. We're going to extract the last page from that request or response, I guess. Um, and then we're going to just assign those variables uh, or assign those values to our existing variables and everything just updates and stays automatic. Um, I can same thing with here on these uh, text fields. I'm just spitting out our the current value of our page va variable. And same thing here. I'm just um, printing the last page value for the last page variable. And that's it.